Greetings, metaphysicians. This is episode 140, Divine Supremacy. That's what we get into today, this idea. Don't let the word supremacy scare you. We're talking about divine supremacy. So let's jump into that, and I hope that you enjoy the episode. You are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical. This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed. It should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discernment, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn from this show. Let's get meta. Welcome to the Let's Get Metaphysical podcast. I'm your host, Renata Maniachi. Here to remind you that you are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience here on lovely planet Earth. Make the most of it. This is season seven, Heaven on Earth, and this is episode 140, Divine supremacy. But before we jump into that episode, I just wanted to say Happy New Year, everyone. It's 2024. I cannot even believe it. I'm sure many of you can't either. This is going to be a really, really interesting year. An argument can be made that every year is interesting. It is. There's a lot happening in the world right now, as we are all aware. And I'm rather excited. You know, I hope no crazy events happen. I hope there's no pandemics. I hope no one gets hurt. I hope there's not, you know, a huge negative event that happens on this planet. But it seems that the truth is becoming ever closer. The truth of our nature, the truth of our existence, the truth of what's been going on on this planet. It seems as though the time is ripe to have some more transparency about how this world has been working. And as I'm sure nobody that listens to this podcast is surprised by, I believe the more transparency, the better. And the closer that we can all get to the truth, the truth of this existence, the truth of creation, individual people's truths, our own truth of what we are, where we've been, who we need to be for this lifetime, all of those things. And so I wish you all the very, very best 2024. And I wanted to start the episode by thanking Everyone who has been, you've heard of patron saints. Well, I have patron angels on this podcast. Patron angels help this podcast to continue on our little community that we have on Patreon, Up, Up, and Awaken Productions. So I wanted to go through and just name those people who helped enable the podcast this last year. So a huge, huge thank you to all of these Patron angels, starting with Paula, Michelle, Glenn, Dana, Nancy, Susan, Jessica, Sandy, Jen, Andrea, Peggy, Ryan, Heather, Vicki, Josephine, Nevin, Melody, Larissa, Kim S, and Kim S. We have two Kim S's. Aisha, Debbie, Lynn, Crystal, and Zebulon. And as always, our patron angel community is ever-changing, and it should be. Some people come on to support for a month. Some people have stayed for years. Whatever it is, it's beautiful, and I'm super grateful for it. All of these, there's so many more people over the last five years who are no longer active in this way who I'm super grateful for as well. 
and this show would not be the same without them and their support. So to all of my patron angels and anyone who's considering becoming a patron angel for the show, thank you so much. And thank you for helping to spread what I hope and feel deeply is a positive energy, a positive intention, certainly, and hopefully a positive influence on our listeners and their families and communities. So thank you very much. And I think we'll jump into the episode now. And so we'll go into our prayer. Are you ready? Let's get meta. Masters and angels, I request your presence, guidance, and support through this episode. Please help these words to be useful to all listeners on their evolutionary journey. Let me know the truth, speak the truth, become the truth, and be the truth. And please let this episode reach whoever needs to hear it. Thank you with gratitude and full faith. Bless creation. This episode is titled Divine Supremacy. And you know, when we hear the word supremacy, at least in the United States, it often has a negative connotation with it. Usually when I, growing up, when I heard the word supremacy, it was always with the term white supremacy. And we've heard this in other ways, and it's usually nothing that we get excited about. And that just means kind of who is in charge, who is making the rules, who is in control, who is the overarching hierarchy. And I wanted to put forward this idea that what would be the most ideal is if we had divine supremacy on this planet. Now, ultimately, on a big picture level, I think that we do. I think that there is divine order in the universe, that there is a, there is an order that everything is governed by. But on this level, in this 3D experience on this planet, it's often not either acknowledged or known that that is what is ordering everything. So I guess on the highest level, I would say that we're already in divine supremacy. The divine is what creates the natural and cosmic order on this planet and everywhere else. So there's that. But I wanted to just connect this to our most recent episode, Soul Takeover. In that episode, we are talking about who is in the driver's seat? Who's in your driver's seat? Your mind or your soul? Or somebody else? Is somebody else calling the shots? I don't even think I went into that too much in last episode, but that's certainly a factor. Who is influencing our choices? And the idea of that episode is that best to have your soul, your own divine, everlasting, immortal soul, be the one who's in the driver's seat. That all-knowing part of you that can access divine truth and clearly connect to your life path and what you set out to accomplish this lifetime. And so that's on an individual level, right? But I guess what I wanted to explore in this episode is the idea of divine supremacy on this planet, known divine supremacy, not somebody. And I just want to be clear, what do I mean by divine supremacy? I don't, what I don't mean by that is any human, any human, I don't care what their race is, uh, which is also on some level a human construct, but non-human and also non-alien. I want to differentiate between celestial and divine and everything else. So 
when I'm talking about divine supremacy, I'm talking about the order, the the highest order, the highest organization possible that that this planet could be governed by on a known and conscious level. As I said, I think that that's already happening at the highest levels, but it rarely filters down, or it does filter down. A lot of people believe that the universe or the divine or God is guiding the progression and evolution of this planet, but so many people are completely unaware of that and think that humans are calling the shots, and on a lot of levels they are. But what I'm proposing here is, what if we all fell under divine supremacy instead of humanly constructed governments, humanly constructed organizations, humanly constructed nonprofits, humanly constructed anything that take more and more control, it seems, of our day-to-day lives. And now we have organizations like the WHO and the WEF and the UN and various governmental organizations who have such, or at least trying to have such a controlling impact on our lives, what we eat and don't eat, what we do and don't do in terms of medical procedures and health and wellness, what we do, what we can and cannot do in terms of travel, what we can and cannot grow in terms of food, what is put in our air, what is put in our water, or what is not, what's put in our music and content and what is not. All of these things are in fact at this moment on these levels controlled by humans who don't really make the best decisions and are easily corrupted, will make choices based on selfish, anti-divine things and conditions because of wants and needs and desires and desperation. And that is how our world is run on these levels that we can see. It's run by humans who are corruptible. And I just want to go in a minute because so many people who listen to this type of podcast are also into the idea of other beings, other planets, alien planets and species and things like this. And I am not against any of that. I believe that there are zillions of planets that are there and have civilization and have intelligent civilization. And of course, we're not the only ones that would, that just, it just wouldn't make any sense, honestly. But to be clear that I am not wanting or encouraging any kind of other supremacy by a different species, right? A different galaxial neighbor, for example, which is different from what I'm talking about in terms of divine beings, divine orders, divine hierarchies, right? I'm talking about celestials and angels and those orders, not those that we would consider our different galaxial neighbors and species on other planets. Okay. Now, why? This topic dropped in, I think, because we try and we're supposed to try on this planet to order ourselves, to evolve. That's a huge part of this whole process is for us to grow and learn and have lessons and to progress, hopefully to progress, uh, to evolve into higher states of consciousness, you know, while hopefully still being guided by the divine, 
guided by the positive, guided by the good, guided by the light, to advance and progress and continue that path and that upward trajectory. Okay. But I guess I've just been wondering, how's that working out for us? <laughs> How's that working out for us right now? It's this constant battle, I think not just for me, but for humanity of, yes, we have free will. Yes, we are meant to make our own choices, our own mistakes, our own progression or regression in many cases. But to what ends? And when and how much oversight do we need and should we have from the divine so that we don't go so far in the wrong direction or a, a negative or downward or dark direction? I have my own personal memory of one of my past lives. And I think I've talked about this before on the show. And I don't, I don't purport to remember many of my past lives. I really don't. Um, I have glimpses of about two or three. And sometimes it feels like they're very clear. And sometimes I just remember very specific moments and glimpses. One that I remember very clearly one moment that I remember very clearly that I've shared before is of a planet being destroyed, a whole planet being destroyed. And so I know deep within my soul that this, that, that is a possibility, that planets can be destroyed, can be blown up, civilizations can be completely destroyed. Well, we know that. But this idea, this knowing that I have, that I remember, and many of you carry that with you as well. Many of you have also been on a planet that blew up or that was destroyed because the inhabitants went in the wrong direction, made the wrong choices, et cetera, whatever. You know, I remember, I remember seeing the new Star Trek for the first time. It's not so new anymore now. It's old, but it came out. I think that's the one that came out in 2009. And seeing, there's a scene in there where the planet Vulcan is destroyed, right? The whole planet is destroyed and their whole, everything, the whole civilization, all of it. And this is before I had the memory, the conscious memory of this lifetime where I watched a similar thing, right? I observed a similar thing or experienced a similar thing. But that moment in that show pulled at something really deep within me. And then a few years later, I had that full memory of a past life when that happened, when I experienced a very similar thing. So why am I sharing that? I'm sharing that because, you know, I can only speak as human right now in this lifetime. I don't actually know if I was what would be considered human in that lifetime. Maybe it was human, maybe it was a different type of being it seemed like it wasn't exactly human. But as sentient material beings, we don't necessarily <laughs> always make the right choices for ourselves and for our planets. Now, on the big level, and that's the dichotomy here, on the greater level, it all turns out, quote unquote, okay, because you're on your evolutionary path, both individually and as a collective and as a planet, etc. So, you know, we get a certain amount of free will to make these choices. But when you have the actual instance, the actual experience of something so intense as a planet blowing up or being destroyed because of the choices that its inhabitants made, you have to wonder if those inhabitants wouldn't do better if there was an overarching visible or at least conscious divine supremacy that is ordering that planet. 
And, you know, I absolutely cannot remember everything from all my past existences. Most people cannot. It's with us. We have that knowledge. We have those experiences. It's in our souls. It's written. We can't escape that. We can't get rid of it. But we also mostly can't access it while we're in this form, in this human form now. Maybe some of it is accessible at certain times and certain moments when you need it. Things are known, things are remembered, but it's not easily accessible. But one of the things that I have a sneaking suspicion about is that not all the planets are run the way that ours currently are. What do I mean by that? I have this sneaking suspicion (laughs) that the majority of the planets in creation do have a higher amount and a more visible, intentional, and conscious amount of divine supremacy ordering them. I have a suspicion that these planets do not blow themselves up do not destroy themselves because of their greater access to the divine, their greater conscious, known, intentional relationship with the divine order of all things. So why isn't ours, if that's true? And of course, I have no way to prove this, right? This is a sneaking suspicion, as I said. It's a feeling. It's a deep, mm, maybe remembrance of something that happened that separated our planet and maybe a handful of others from this access to what we could call maybe a divine progression with more input and access to co-create or at least be positively and divinely led by this higher order that frankly wouldn't allow the inhabitants of any planet to allow it to be destroyed or something like that, right? Other things that I can't even think about or begin to describe. I think I've mentioned this before on the show too. And, you know, some would call this the fall, like the, the, the battle between, you know, I get so many stories on this planet are, you know, the, that the fallen angels, right? The, a handful of angels, comparatively, decided to order this planet and maybe a few other planets the way that they wanted to. And that this is kind of an experiment to see what happens. I feel like I'm getting way out there in this episode, but I've also talked about this before. But this idea that if we, let's just make it numbers that we can understand. If there's a thousand planets in the universe, and of course I think there's millions if not zillions, but if there's a thousand planets in the universe and only all but 10 of them fell under this divine supremacy. So they have their own evolutions, they have their own progression, but it's such that they can't go so far out of line. They have to kind of stay within some kind of, you know, Mm, cosmic order, divinely ordered guidelines so that they can't be destroyed. They can't make such horrible decisions that it would throw off not only that planet, but if a planet blows up, it affects everything around it and probably everything in all space and time and galaxies, even zillions of zillions of what we call light years away. So the idea that only 10 of these thousand planets does not fall under what we would call divine supremacy and that they are, in fact, able to kind of, for the moment, determine their own 
evolution and path forward in a way that the other ones have less, I guess, free will. That's what it feels like we're in right now. But it also feels like we might be heading back towards <laughs> the divine supremacy part. At least maybe that's my hope or understanding on a deep level of what we're doing in this space and time on this planet. And I can't tell how this would sound to people listening. <laughs> Either people listening are like, yeah, it does feel like that. Or they're like, what the hell is she talking about? But it's what's coming through today. And I think if it's coming through, it's somewhere out there. It's in the ether. And what if the whole point or one of the major points of this moment of existence, this moment of this planet's existence is in fact to bring it back under divine supremacy, to bring it back to under the wing of God, so to speak, from a maybe long sojourn as a quarantined planet trying to make its way on its own through the choices of the humans or the choices of these fallen angels, if that indeed is true, if we had that happen and got quarantined from the rest of the universe and had to make our own way, maybe we're coming to the end of that cycle. And that's why there's so much happening on this planet right now at this time, at this time. You know, without any kind of proof, this is, of course, all speculation. But imagine what it could be like to be a planet that was held in the palm of the divine so that we couldn't just make these decisions that will destroy the environment, destroy the water, destroy the air, destroy our home and ultimately destroy ourselves if we were guided by the power that is the glue that holds everything together, the whole universe. And again, on the highest level, and some, somehow we are, somehow we are, but I'm talking about it trickling down to be seen, to be experienced, to be felt, to be known, to be known on a deep level by this planet and all of its inhabitants. Okay, we're not alone. We're being guided. We're not going to blow ourselves up. We are not going to be so corrupted that we make selfish choices that put ourselves and others in peril or in danger of surviving, of evolving, of progressing, of moving forward. I feel that that is the path that we're on. And I hope that it remains that way and becomes more and more obvious. More and more obvious, more and more divine, more and more just present and apparent. So I'll leave it there for today. I just wanted to ponder that. And we'll continue into the new year. We'll continue into 2024. And we'll see what comes through this year. I wish everyone listening the very best. Stay positive. Stay safe. And stay meta. The Let's Get Metaphysical podcast is an Up, Up, and Awaken production and is produced and hosted by Renata Maniachi. Our intention is to raise the vibration of the planet by sharing, validating, and normalizing spiritual and metaphysical experiences. If you are ready to raise your vibration, you might enjoy our free Let's Get Meta Master Clearing. To receive the Master Clearing or to learn more about the podcast, visit letsgetmeta.com. The Let's Get Meta podcast is inspired by angels and supported by angels. If you would like to be a patron angel to the podcast, 
visit patreon.com slash let's get meta. Thank you for listening. Stay meta. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical.